Welcome aboard. It's Captain G with an Operation Ultra uh, post-mortem and end-of-game update. So uh, the game has ended and each of us are recording our own end-game videos. What I'm going to try to do is quickly cover what Eggman and I were trying to accomplish with the uh, two major, two minor powers that we controlled, as well as some of our observations on how the game went, key moments, uh, etc. So, start with Russia. Um, doesn't take uh, more than a quick glance at all the sea of gray and black uh, here in Russia to see that things did not go well um at all with russia um, our strategy was to try to get ahead of the german uh, barbarossa and if if we could take vilpuri take um helsinki and and basically stop the germans in the north uh, have them go through a sea of individual one infantries and work their way to moscow then We'd have our defenses there. Um, that didn't work. Uh, we just took Vilpuri when Germany attacked and was able to use their Barbarossa bonus and took out all of our starting tanks, artillery, mechs, um, our best units in Vilpuri. And I don't believe we did anything more than kill infantry on the, the Germans. Similar to when the Germans eventually took Moscow um, we never killed a German tank. Um, and that's why I totally maxed out all my sculpts. Everyone I had, plus more that I was pulling from other games, other sculpts to just keep the supply going. Um, so that didn't work well. Um, I think the only successful strategy for Russia is to turtle in Moscow, uh, which means the first attack can take Leningrad, so you're going to lose Leningrad on turn one of the German attack, whatever, whenever Germany decides to go. And then it's just a matter of time before they knock on the door. And so the Battle of Moscow, how much investment and preparation did you commit everything there? Did you try to do anything else? Will determine the fate of Russia. So we did not do well with Russia. We were a little disappointed. Um, the only positive... Uh, we got from, was a comment made by Triple Crown, and I'd have to watch his post-game video to see if it was just a side comment or if it was something he actually changed his plans. But he did say that the Soviet 3rd Shock Army up here forced him to commit more German forces up into this area, and that changed his plans of sending Germans down into North Africa to help the Italians. So if that's true, that was a positive, and, th and that allowed um, Great Britain and the Commonwealth under Hambone to do a lot down here, perhaps. Um, but, you know, it certainly cost us Moscow. So uh, failing grade for the Russians. They, they stayed alive, so they only slightly did better than the CCP, which got totally wiped out. But we did not do well with Russia at all. So that's, you know, the major and the minor power of CCP. We just tried to annoy Japan uh, in China and do some pinprick attacks. Our attempt was to get an infantry down here and join with the, the Soviets and have our Russian CCP joint defense away from the coast and force the, the Japanese to come after us and... Um, because Japan was distracted taking India, taking the Philippines, you know, pushing down into the Money Islands and in uh, Indonesia. We had a little time, but as soon as he turned his attention back on China, you know, the CCP was an endangered and then an extinct uh, species. So we, again, not a great result for the CCP for us. So next up then, and the category of countries was the KMT. We lasted a little bit longer. We tried to preserve our forces, keep some force available to counter strike. And whenever we 
deviated from that. Uh, again, the Japanese, if they weren't distracted, focused on other areas of operations, um, were pushing in on um, KMT. We decided at the very end to try as part of a desperate gamble to send the KMT down to Calcutta, partner with the British to try to liberate this before the German Blitzkrieg came through, destroy Siam, and take Singapore. But um, one of the things that, that came up out of this move was that the KMT is not supposed to be able to go down into India or Siam or Singapore. So 8.1, I think that's being addressed. Uh, 8.0 was uh, loosely worded, and we thought it said we could, but those who uh, knew the rules knew what they had intended um, with what was written. So that's being corrected. Um, so that you won't see that strategy. Not that it was much of a strategy. Um, again, so, you know, if that was the case, then maybe go over here towards Hong Kong, Shanghai. But got to be careful, obviously, on the on the coast with Japan. So not a great grade. Um, we did survive longer than we had expected. But I think that was more because of Japan's priorities than KMT uh, any brilliant moves Chiang Kai-shek did. For the U.S., um, let me just start in the Atlantic. We really didn't do much. Um, we had a great ally. Very impressive. Never played a game with or against Hambone before. Uh, he was a great ally. He had um, things he did every turn. He moved his units swiftly around the map, was constantly harassing, attacking. You know, he can do more with an infantry and artillery and an, and an aircraft um, than we could with a whole um, army of Russian guards and tanks. Uh, so great playing with him and seeing what he did, um, pretty much clearing all of North Africa except for this last holdout for the Italians. I don't know how he did it. Um, so we, uh, we wanted our focus on Japan and we, we shared that with him, which is probably not great news for, for <laughs> headquarters in London to hear that we weren't going to come across right away. We'd, we'd do that eventually, but our focus was on Japan. So we had some small forces totally in support of whatever he wanted to do, putting the fleet up here to protect it against the German subs, move it down. Uh, just totally in support. And then uh, we got distracted a little bit after Mas Moscow fell and Spain aligned and Argentina aligned. So this was fun. It's a part of the map that most folks don't use except for placing uh, player aids or their money or what have you. Um, and, you know, Hambone talked about that uh, even in his videos where he had to move his stuff. So... It was fun to get it in here. It's not going to last long, Arge Argentina. Uh, fortunately, we just happened to have some U.S. forces down here and we were able to move quickly with the and use the B-17. But other than this, we didn't really do much in the Atlantic. So on to the Pacific. This was our area of focus. Um, we didn't know at the very beginning of the game... Um, you know, exactly the move or the attack that we would make, but we had a plan to build up and confront the Japanese and focus on a death blow rather than a painful campaign. Um, and we started by um, trying to build up the Philippines. Um, there was some confusion about the minor factory and the uh, military base there so that cost us I think a couple ships because we sent some ships down here rather than evacuate them had we evacuated them it would have you know those four ships wouldn't have gotten captured around here or cut off by by the Japanese fleet but uh, that was minor what we really wanted to do was make Philippines which in most games most of the time is an automatic just quick take it you know, it's part of the blitz that Japan does. Make it costly, make it painful. Uh, we built the fortification. We built 
We sent down transports with Marines. We flew down aircraft. We built infantry here. Um, trying to perhaps goad Japan into attacking the U.S. first, using its surprise attack to take some pressure off Calcutta. Um, to his credit, Hilltop did not fall for that. He stuck with his plan and basically eliminated the FEC day one of the war. So it was a non-player. And then he turned his sights on us, and we didn't last very long. Um, it was a bloody fight. You know, the Marines did well, and it cost the Japanese some resources to get in there, but it did fall. And then after that, we just built up. Um, and the CB maneuver, um, you know, we even said when we bought it that the rules are going to change on that to clarify what you can and cannot do. And I, I think the revised 8.1 rules will be a better version um, so that way you don't invest a lot of time and effort into a game and then suddenly it's over. Um, so here, um, again, just this big move. That's, we fully expected that this raid, it was more of a Dieppe than a D-Day, uh, that we might take it. We would destroy his production on the island because both these would go to minor, then when he takes them back, they would disappear entirely. We'd steal one turn of 100-some IPP, so he wouldn't be producing except for here on the continent. Um, fortunately, he had just placed, moved his transports back into Philippines, so he was within range. He had a massive fleet here, which is why we sent only the bare minimum that we needed to safely land why we took out these transports so he couldn't bring in these Marines. Um, but he had enough air and enough ground troops to retake what was left. It would have been costly, and it would have been hard for him to replace it while we would have been building up and then coming in. So I think that's why the uh, the group decided to call it. But that was the intent. We, we didn't think that we would be able to hold that forever, and certainly we didn't. So... That's our feedback. Those are the things we tried to do. I uh, don't know if next time um, <clears throat> we played and we were the U.S. that we would do a Pacific only because it really does give Germany a free hand in Europe and puts a lot of strain and a lot of pressure on the United Kingdom in this area. Uh, fortunately, as I said, Hambone was up to the task and, and did really well. We we're um, quite proud of our ally. I offered to send him money. He said he didn't need it. Um, I'm sure he could have used it, but we both recognize the risk in this game of sending Lend Lease and rolling the dice, which is why we didn't even send it to Russia when we knew they could desperately use it. Just we didn't determine it to be worth the risk. So um, next up for us, we're all going to reset our tables. Uh, we've agreed to come back uh, in January with... Um, the roles reversed, so Eggman, myself, will be partnering with Hambone again as the Axis, and Triple Crown and Hilltop will be playing the Allies. I don't know how they've decided to, or if they have even talked about what roles each of them will do. Um, Hambone uh, said he'll take Japan, and Eggman and myself will share uh, Italy and Germany, so... Maybe if this is how the map looks at the end of the next game, uh, we can be as successful as Triple Crown was in Europe. So wish us luck. Hope you enjoyed this one and look forward to having you with us on the next game. For Eggman, I'm Captain G. Over and out.